I also am the only candidate in the race that hasn't been part of Theresa May's government over the last three years. I obviously had ministerial experience, including in the Cabinet under David Cameron. Um, and I think I've got something to offer. If we're going to get Brexit done, which is absolutely essential, then I think we need a fresh approach and we can't just keep doing what we've been doing because that hasn't been successful. And I think, you know, we've got a real task on our hands to get Brexit done with this Parliament, with the arithmetic and the colleagues that we have. And I think it's going to be very difficult and we need someone with a plan and it can't just be the same plan that we've had over the last three years. Well, we spoke to uh, Sam Jimmy yesterday and he's, of course, the former university's minister and he's the only candidate of the 13 who, who says that he would like a second referendum. But you're saying that you think we can get a better deal. I mean, Theresa May, obviously not a good negotiator, not someone who could uh, perhaps uh, do the sort of the arm twisting, the cajoling that perhaps was needed with the European Union. Um, and, and yet we've been told again and again and again, Jean-Claude Juncker, Michel Barnier, Donald Tusk, every one of them said again and again, the European European withdrawal agreement deal is not up for negotiation. Why would it be up for negotiation or renegotiation with you when it hasn't been with Theresa May? Well, look, I, I think you're right about the, the state of the, the deal as it is, but I think what we'd have to do is confront the European Union with a simple question. They, they want to get this done as well. They want us to leave in an orderly way with a deal. It must be patently obvious to them, particularly given that Theresa May is having to stand down, that the withdrawal agreement, as is currently drafted, is not going to go through Parliament. The only thing that has been passed by Parliament was effectively the withdrawal deal with the backstop changed. Uh, and I think you have to sit down and have a sensible conversation with them about that. One of the key things which I've set out in my Brexit plan is a lot of this is going to be about building confidence with the Irish government, getting Stormont back up and running so that you can build confidence with both communities and all the parties in Northern Ireland. And I think if you were able to do that, then I think you might get some movement on the backstop and be able to sell them on the idea that you could then get a deal, which you could get through Parliament so that we could leave with a deal. And I have been honest enough to say I don't think you can get a deal and get out on the 31st of October. I simply think there isn't time to get the deal done and get it through Parliament. So I've been honest about that and I'll be interested to see you know, whether the other candidates... Uh, well, some of the other candidates well. have pointed out this. It might be dishonest of uh, the other candidates to suggest uh, uh, that they could renegotiate uh, a deal and get out on the 31st of October. I have to say, even as a staunch Brexiteer, I see that as a little bit unlikely. And even for a no deal, I would be quite happy uh, for there to be another extension. Hey, we've had enough extensions. Mm. Uh, a few more months, more... We'd be right. as long as we were sure it was going to happen. How can we be sure, though, that Brexit won't be stopped? And how can a Tory MP or indeed a Tory party member or indeed a mm -hmm. future voter be, who voted Leave be sure that you, Mark Harper, who campaigned for Remain in 2016, mm -hmm. is going to deliver Brexit? Well, two things. I think, first of all, look at my record since the referendum. So during the referendum, I spent my time as Chief Whip making sure Conservative Party, uh, Conservative MPs, um, remembered that there was an afterwards and that they had to come together afterwards. But every single vote since the referendum, I have tried to deliver Brexit. So I voted against the Prime Minister's deal because I think my judgment on it was right. Uh, I voted for it the third time because I thought if we didn't get it through, we weren't going to leave. I think my judgment was right on that. And I voted against extending Article 50 and I thought we should have left and I voted for leaving on the 29th of March and the 12th of April. So I've proved I want to get this done. But I think the only way you get it done in this Parliament is that you've got to win over the Conservative MPs. They're very reluctant to leave without a deal. And but I you're think not going to win Well, though, I think though. they're only going to be persuaded if they think you have absolutely everything humanly possible to get a deal. No, but then the Dominic but Greaves and the others, well, no, no, then they'll say, well, then we don't leave. But I think they've, we've now looked to what happens in the European elections to the Conservative Party if we don't leave. And, and it seems to me if we go to a general election and we haven't left, those Conservative MPs are going to have themselves. What they're really saying is that they're going to have a Jeremy Corbyn government. And I think if you're a Conservative, opening up a Corbyn government is against everything you believe in. But I don't think you're going to be able to win those people over if you haven't strained every sinew to get a good deal. But I, don't, the, I simply don't but think But the impression I've got over. from speaking on a regular basis to former Attorney General Dominic Grieve, <clears> leading Remain <throat> Tory, is that he said he simply would, um, you know, a, a, a no deal Brexit is simply unacceptable to him, as it's, you know, like of Andrew Adonis and mm. others um, uh, in the Labour side. Um, and uh, he simply wouldn't allow it to happen. They would revoke Article 50. So but it, the argument I think they have is that, look, yes, they don't want a, a Jeremy Corbyn government, but the Jeremy Corbyn government perhaps elected max five years 
years, uh, whereas Brexit is forever and will do more damage, I think, is their view, in their, their view that mm. Brexit is such a terrible, awful thing on any basis. Well, I think that's one of the arguments, actually, that we need to have. And I think today's evidence, in fact, is exactly why I think even in five years, Jeremy Corbyn could wreak enormous havoc. So I remember two things. One was when this country was attacked with chemical weapons by Russia. And there's a call to be made by leaders about which side you're on. And Jeremy Corbyn, I watched him in the House of Commons, sounded more like he was sympathetic to the Russians than backing our agencies and the people that were given a choice of who to believe safe. Yes. exactly when it was a choice of who to believe he believed russia not our agencies and then we look at today we've got donald trump and whatever you think about his domestic policies he's the president of the united states of america our strongest security ally and jeremy corbyn's not just not going to the state banquet and snubbing the queen but he's out you know speaking at a demo against our strongest ally, I think Jeremy Corbyn government, in f just in five years, could wreak enormous havoc, both with the economy and with our security. It's one of the reasons why I was against the government and the cabinet opening talks with him, because I don't think he has the best interests of the United Kingdom at heart. Well, D Donald Trump doesn't seem to be much of a fan of him either. Um, uh, but in terms of uh, his, his endorsement effects with Boris Johnson, he does seem to be the runaway candidate at the moment. Everyone said he was a, the favourite among party members by a long way, favourite among uh, Tory voters and indeed among floating voters, quite apart from just the, the name recognition for Boris. Again, he's often known as Boris, not Boris yeah. Johnson. Um, but, um, but it does appear that He's got some 80 MPs behind the scenes who are endorsing him uh, as, as leader within the Commons and possibly could already be approaching the 105 he'd need to guarantee his place on that second uh, ballot. Um, have you got anything like that support? Well, look, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but when I was looking this morning at the latest numbers, a very interesting statistic, I think, from one of the websites is that 52% of Conservative MPs have announced who they're backing, 48% have not, which is an interesting um, set of statistics. Uh, so that means they're almost half my colleagues are undeclared. And when we have the hustings next week, I'll be setting out my arguments about my plan to deliver Brexit, the other things I'm interested in, in reminding people of the Conservative Party is about freedom and about opportunity. And I'll set out my stall as the only candidate in this race who hasn't been part of the government for the last three years, who hasn't been party to the mistakes that have been made, which are why we haven't managed to deliver on the promises we made what, three years ago. What would you say to those who, who would think, a that, that, little bit cynically, that this is a, about for an awful lot of those candidates who haven't got a chance of getting into the final two, that this is actually just about, well, trying to wangle a decent job offer at the end of the day and raising your profile rather than actually being a serious candidate to be effectively the next prime minister of this country? Well, I know people do say that about people. I'm very clear. I'm in this to win the race. I wouldn't be doing it otherwise. As I said, I've served in the Cabinet under David Cameron, so I know what that's like. Um, I think I've got something to offer to my colleagues. I shall be setting that out clearly when we have the hustings kicking off um, next week, uh, and I hope to do very well. Uh, a point I made to my colleagues this morning before we came on air, actually. Uh, you're, you're, I think, with all due respect, not a household name, Mark Harper, as a nope. former chief whip, but I pointed out that was probably meant you were rather good as a chief whip, because when you know the chief whip's name, it usually means things are going horribly wrong for a government. Well, that's exactly what I said to people. But the, the difficulty when your, your cabinet job was being chief whip is the sort of job that if you're doing it well, nobody should know who you are and you shouldn't be going and doing media interviews and people only generally find out who you are if it isn't going well. So I, I tend to flip it around and say, if you don't know who I am, that's because I did a good job as chief whip.